Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Tyler Nelson and Jessica Backleese, the editors of Michael B. Jordan's Creed Three, uh, a great film. I, I love it so much. I, this is the first from based on research and stuff. It seems like this is the first time you guys work together as editors in this like together in, in, as editors. So I guess like how did that collaboration kind of work for both of you? And like you know what was the process like of like working together on this one? Well, I was hired on first. Uh, I, I met with the filmmakers and um, they hired me and uh, they they called me up and said, like, well, we're going to need a, a, a second editor based on the schedule and like how much uh, footage is coming in uh, right, right right from the beginning because they shot all the fights um, uh, in the first couple of weeks, which is just a, a mountain worth of footage. So they asked me if I knew any people that I wanted to work with. And uh, I've never worked with Jess, but I've worked tangentially next to her and she's worked in a lot of commercials and uh there's a lot of commercials that she worked on that were kind of informed by the like the montages that go into rocky and creed movies so i thought of her first and foremost and fortunately uh we were able to bring her on yeah tyler and i had sort of been crossing paths for a while we had both worked um, with editor Kirk Baxter, I'd worked with him more on a commercial side, and then Tyler had worked with him on the narrative side with Fincher. So we got to know each other through him. And yeah, we've just kind of like, it just sort of seems like it was sort of like this, and then it ended up working out that we were actually able to work on this one together, which was amazing. Yeah. And then while, when you're working together, I guess, like, how does, like you mentioned, like, I, this is like a big undertaking, like there's so many fights and it just is like, it, it's a, it seems like a, a, a very a lot of material I would imagine so how do you guys like kind of like work to like how does that work together work are you like kind of pass things back and forth or you like how, how do you kind of like the nitty-gritty of it I guess like how do you think it how does it how did it work on this well Justin and I were talking about this just yesterday where you know the the way we work feels natural to us but other people find it a little bit more uh curious but uh, <laughs> uh, I, th I thought it worked out quite well. But, yeah. you know, ultimately, as the footage came in, we would kind of uh, agree to take on certain material or, you know, we, you know, as I talked about, we had a, a, just a mountain uh, of footage at the beginning. And, you know, I was working on a lot of the fights and then Jess would start picking up the uh, other scenes that were coming in. She started what, two weeks after me, something like that. Yeah, two or three, something like that. I was buried in fights and just started taking on some other um, material. And then we kind of just worked on our own materials uh, exclusively, but then we started passing scenes back and forth to one another. And, you know, the, the great part about our collaboration was the fact that we would see, you know, something that could be potentially enhanced. Um, and this is all like during the dailies process and editorial cut, uh, the editor's cut. And we would be kind of our first audience to, um, you know, uh, fine tune something before Michael actually saw it once photography was done. Yeah. Yeah, it was really great, actually, because we could work on something. And when you do have so much material to go through and, and you're really trying to pick and choose the best parts, both for like camera and performance, and then also trying to build the fights into like the tempo and the pace that you want them to be you know, there's a lot to look at. And so I think that Tyler and I being able to look at each other's cuts, look at each other's ideas, um, offer up ideas about like, oh, well, I think this part's really working, but maybe I, I remember seeing a shot that was like really great. Maybe if we tried that here, that could be really good. And so we were able to sort of bounce ideas off of each other and then pull Mike into the room and like all of us could watch stuff and talk about it. Um, and then whenever it came time to do Mike's notes, we were able to say like, okay, well, I'm going to jump into this set of notes and you jump into that set of notes. But it wasn't like each one of us had our own little section of the movie that we were working on. We were very much like we'd work on top of each other. Sometimes we had sequences that we would, would kind of owned a little bit more than the others. But I think that, I think for the most part, I think we both touched like every part of this movie at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I am thinking maybe oh, I'm a handful, maybe, maybe 10 sequences or 10 scenes tops that are exclusively mine or exclusively yours. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, uh, the, the best part about our collaboration is that we were open to each other's ideas and kind of fed off each other. Um, and it was a lot of, you know, improv, yes, and type um, <laughs> back and forth, which was great. Yeah. Well, and it was really good too, because I could also be like, hey, I am burned out on this thing. Like I've been working on it and working on it, working on it. Like I need to take a break. I need to cut some drama scenes or just do something to give my eyeballs a refresher. And then if the sequence needed to keep getting moved forward, like Tyler could take it on for a bit and then vice versa. So it allowed us to sort of get like fresh perspective on something. And then also you could be like, hey, I, I really like this thing. So, you know, just keep that in mind. <laughs> 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 it, it's funny you mentioned fresh fresh perspective there because I was thinking like the film itself feels like very much fresh. Obviously, it's like the third Creed film and, and we've had, I think, six or seven maybe Rocky films, right? So it's like this is a well-worn genre and obviously Michael coming in as a first-time director, but like so much of this feels so different, I think, while obviously still a lot of the same themes as the, the films. But I mean, like, I think visually it looks different. The fights, everything feels like a lot different. I guess like neither of you had worked previously on the other Creed film. So did that help like coming in with that like fresh perspective just in general with the genre and the films in your kind of approach and working with Mike? I mean, for me, I, I was always a fan of uh, the Rocky and Creed movies, which is why I kind of sought this one out in the first place. When I saw the, the announcement of it, I was like, I want to work on that movie. So I, I came in as a fan more than anything, but the the movies I've worked on uh, prior to this, movies and TV shows I've worked on or prior to this, are not anything like this at all. Uh, so I think I was able to take a different set of skills and implement them into uh, this new uh, new genre that that I've never worked in before. And um, I think maybe this was uh, the the good part about this was uh, that a lot of the the, the there's a lot of continuity of all the people that were working on the Creed films. Like Michael knows this character inside and out because, you know, Adonis Creed is Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan is Mike, uh, Adonis Creed. Um, <laughs> so like he, he knows who this character is and that would inform a lot of conversations between him and I and, and also Jess. Um, but, and th then we also had the, uh, like uh, Keenan Kugler, who is the brother of Ryan Kugler, uh, who was the director of the first movie, he had the sensibilities that brought in, you know, the, the gravitas of, of the through line from the first movie and the second movie, the third movie. And then Ryan was obviously involved because he was a producer of this movie. Uh, I think, and then Clayton, I want to also bring up Clayton Barber, who was the stunt coordinator on this. He did the the fights in the first movie, and uh, he wanted to up his game on on this movie, and I think he certainly did because uh, I love the fights that he put together in the, in this movie, and uh, they were really fun to cut. But overall, it was a lot of <laughs> it was a lot of a uh, uh, uniformity for the Creed franchise, but also like the fresh blood of Jess and myself coming in to kind of put our own perspective on things. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I love the Rocky movies. Like I used to have like the VHS box set, which is like super dating myself, but that's fine. Um, so it's like I had grown up watching those forever. And so I, I was very, very excited to work on those. But it was interesting because it wasn't, we weren't constantly dipping back into the older movies as reference points. It was very much like, what is this movie what's best for this movie, what makes this movie unique. And obviously like the nature of the movie is going to always call back to the originals, but uh, for the actual creation of this movie, it very much was like, what can this movie be on its own? How can it stand on its own? Yeah, I mean, I think with, definitely with the fights, it feels like, it, I mean, I, I've seen Michael talk about like how an anime maybe inspired him too, like and all these different things. And it's like, uh, you really sense that in the film and the fight scenes are just incredible. But you know, also, I think with the characters too, I love obviously Adonis, like we're saying, like that is a great Michael B. Jordan character. I think Dame is just awesome, like an awesome character and the way that he's not necessarily made it to be a villain, I found like really compelling. And like, you're kind of like really balancing, like obviously he's an antagonist per se, but like you're balancing that in the story, he's balanced very well. And I just was like, 
I feel like there could have been like a villain edit, certainly with Dame, right? Where he's like played up very much like a clever Lang or whatever, but it's not. And I guess I would love to hear you guys talk about that. And like, also like how you kind of spoke about the character maybe with Michael too. Yeah. I mean, I think that that was actually like a big part of our conversation with Michael when we were first kind of getting into it was just, you know, uh, both the characters of Adonis and Dame are flawed. And they've both done good things and they've both done bad things. And they've they've made choices in their lives that have impacted other people in good ways and, and in bad ways. And so there wasn't this sort of clear cut villain arc that we were trying to create. We very much wanted it to be about the growth of Adonis's character and him realizing that these things in his past are still informing his, his present and how he's gonna move forward in the future. So we were trying very much to operate more in the gray than in the black and the white when it came to both of those characters. Yeah, I remember the first pass of the diner scene where they're sitting across from one another having their first conversation after all those years. And there was a lot of um, lot of possibilities of how that conversation could play out because, uh, you know, they're, they're much like what you were just saying, Christopher, is like there could be the the villain pass and where you see him tipping his hat to like his um like motivations for reigniting this uh friendship or you know just connecting with this guy that he might be able to manipulate later on. Uh but I don't think that was ever in the the desire of of Michael or any of the filmmakers. I thought they wanted to have that thread the needle of how can we make this guy um like re be reintroduced to to Adonis's life and get the opportunities that Adonis was given um uh that he got throughout the course of his his career and when he didn't get what he thought he was going to get that's when the archness started to kind of come out but um there were definitely some performances where it could have made Dame just like ultra arch from the beginning but i don't think that was interesting as a for his character or the the story as a whole yeah i think we tried very hard to like make sure there was no mustache twirling yeah. <laughs> the damian character that's good you have you mentioned like we're talking about michael here obviously he's like a first-time director you both worked with like incredible filmmakers just looking at your imdbs and like and just in, in various capacities not to compare michael to like these other great filmmakers but i guess like what surprised you maybe about him be coming in as a first time director? I think from my, I mean, from a viewing standpoint, I'm like, it feels like the work of someone who's done this before, even though he's not obviously. Right. So I was like very, just as a viewer, I was very impressed, but I guess like getting to work with him so intimately, like how, what surprised you maybe, or how did you feel about, you know, how that collaboration came together? I mean, Mike's an incredible actor, you know, and he's been doing it for a very long time. Like he, he knows scene work, he knows actors, he knows performance. Um, he knows how to let something breathe. He knows, you know, and his response might be uh, that something needs more time or something needs more space, um, or it could be like about pace, you know? So I think that, I think that Mike's skill as an actor has really helped him become this director for this film because I think that the skills that he's learned over the course of all the years he's spent on set have allowed him to interact with the actors both like in the shooting process I can't imagine how difficult it would be to be in those scenes and shooting those scenes especially when it comes to a fight sequence um so you know I think that those skills just really came together in a really strong way as we were putting this movie together yeah, and then also he chose like an amazing team, like and and uh, like the collaboration between the cinematographer, the costumes, production designer, uh, producing team. Like everybody was really coming with their A game, and he he hired the right people to kind of help see his vision come to life. Um, and uh, I think that was like a fantastic choice on his part to like you know know uh, like ask the questions that he didn't know the answers to and lean on the people that had the skills that he didn't quite know, but also be willing to learn uh, because it seems like he, this is something he wants to do, not just once, like one and done. Like it feels like he wants to continue this, this um, career as a director. Yeah. 
I'm glad you mentioned like the class. The, I mean, you guys also, I feel like are great <laughs> hires, but I feel like it reminded me a little of like Drew Barrymore directed this movie Whip It. I don't know if you remember this, but it had like Robert yeah. Yeoman was the cinematographer. Dylan Tetchner was the editor. And it's like all these amazing people working with Drew Barrymore. And it like, it's a great movie, I think, because like all the collaborators and then you have like her talent as like an actor. And I think similar with Michael here as well. It's like really great when they're the hiring process is very hiring your collaborators is very, very important. I feel like as a, for a director. So yeah, that, that's what I was thinking of too. We were uh, Tyler and you and I were talking before we started about just like the montage aspect of it and like doing a great training montage is foundational to these movies. This one has just an awesome training montage. I, I love the way it's shot. I love everything about it. I guess like, how did you guys kind of like figure out exactly how that should be? And also like we're saying, like differentiating it from, you know, it's obviously in the theme of what we said, like Rocky movies and Creed movies, but it's still differentiated enough to be like, feel like original something maybe we haven't actually seen in these movies before. I want Jess to take that one. Cause she, uh, she's the one that saw that one right. through the end. And like, she did an, uh, just a stellar job putting that together. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Uh, yeah. I mean, we worked on the montage. I mean, basically, from the first section of dailies all the way through you know the very last picture lock moment so um we had dailies with michael and then we had dailies with damien and so the sort of push pull of like those two characters on each other i feel like the montage actually kind of shaped as we started to work through the drama of the movie, we would realize like, oh, the montage needs to have this going on with it emotionally because that's where the characters are coming in at this point. So we really tried to really put like an emotional undercurrent under the entire thing. Um, and then also find the moments where obviously you get those very satisfying big training montage moments where you can just like get those big lifts and it just feels great. Um, you know, and Mike was incredible. Like he did those, you know, he was fully doing all of that physical work at the same time that he's acting and that he's directing. So, I mean, that's, it was a huge, it was a huge lift for him. And I think that overall it came together great. And I would also like to shout out to Michael Shaver, who is another editor and he cut, um, Wakanda forever with Kugler and they were on that and then Wakanda wrapped and Michael was actually able to come on to our project for a couple of weeks at the end when we were kind of hitting additional photography final fights and montage and he was able to give us a hand on the getting those things over the finish line so he was very very incredible and his talents were appreciated that's awesome do you have do you work with like are you, when you're doing this too, are you thinking, are you working with the music too, I guess? Like, how do you kind of make sure, like, because I, I, I think the score is great and the music obviously is awesome, like the soundtrack, but like, are you kind of like trying to match it exact? Like, how do you like kind of, hand, like, how does the music play into what you're doing, I guess? Yeah, the music was like an ongoing conversation from day one. Like, we tried a lot of different tracks. We tried a different, a lot of different concepts. Uh, there was a lot of discussion around what is the right artist for the song part of it. Um, I think the idea was always we knew we wanted it to be a combination of score and song. Um, so there was just a lot of different builds. There was different tempos that we tried. So uh, much like the montage itself, where it it never the work never stopped, uh, the music also just kind of kept getting remade, retried, reinvented, and then eventually what happened is there was a recording session with uh, the woman who sings some of the lyrics on it and everyone felt very inspired by her voice and that kind of turned into a turning point of like okay let's build off of this concept with her voice and then we'll bring in the other elements that we feel like are working. You, Tyler you mentioned before we were talking I think in earlier in this interview about like the pace I think you mentioned like the pacing and how great I, I just I, one of the things I love about this movie is I feel like it is very paced exactly right and it feels like the right like length I mean like and I feel like it, I, I don't know I just think it's such a testament to both of your work that it's like just a I, for lack of a better word like super watchable right like and I feel like a lot of movies I see are not watchable really at sometimes as much as this and I just love this about this film uh and I just like I guess like I found that like I feel like that's a lot of both of your work together I guess like how do you make sure you're making something that especially like when you're saying you're watching it over and over again probably and like going through scenes like how do you know that it's like gonna be watchable and like you know accessible I guess or you know for lack of a better word well I, I mean the, the 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 tricky part was finding like how to get to the the, the beginning of the movie uh 
in the quickest possible way. And and when we say the beginning of the movie, it's basically the beginning of adult Adonis mm-hmm. and adult games relationship. So we refer to it as the oh homie scene um because that's the 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 words that dame says when he sees it on this for the first time uh so we kept trying to figure out how to get to oh homie as quickly as possible and with this movie in particular we have the prologue scene which goes on quite a while um where you know we have uh young dame picking up adonis and they're going to the golden gloves fight and having the golden gloves fight and then they're celebrating after the win and then they eventually end up at the liquor store that scene, all those scenes, the sequence uh, um, that we have there was quite long in the first couple cuts. Uh, so we need to figure out a way of being more efficient with that in the storytelling. And, uh, you know, every time we attack that sequence, we just kind of trimmed it and kind of asked those questions of like, do we need this? Do we need to, do we need to see this? Do we need to see this character? Uh, when do we actually want to get out of the liquor store? Because the liquor store did not actually end where it ends now with um adonis uh beating up leon and you know, the the punches that bring us into the cape um oh god. <laughs> cape town. you got cape it. town thank you oh my god <laughs> it's been nine <laughs> months since we worked on this movie uh the cape town fight so uh it actually uh incorporated a lot of what became the flashbacks uh throughout our our, our movie so that sequence got cut down pretty significantly and then we sped through the the whole um relationship building of his daughter and reintroducing bianca and you know introducing felix and the the new um protege boxer and then we get to oh homie and we sl- kind of had a a map of like how quickly we could get through all that stuff and it just kind of compressed every version of the movie we did until we got to oh homie as quickly as we possibly could and then we knew that once uh once we got it to a certain length we just knew that the uh, the rest of the movie kind of had to compress with that so um you know I, what, what's the runtime now it's just under two hours mm-hmm. and uh it, you know it was hovering um well over that for quite a while and we eventually found a way of compressing to uh to a length that is quote unquote very watchable <laughs> i mean i think the way you guys kind of get that opening prologue i love that sequence and i think you really are right like it kind of just you're pushed right through right into it and you get all you get all the information you can I, we have to wrap up but i guess last thing was like i love the way you also the flashbacks are like threaded through the film and like we kind of see that was that like was that the same kind of trial and error to figure out when you would want to dip back into that or was that like you know were those always going to be where they were or like how did you kind of like figure that part out Yeah, that was a creation in post. Uh, Whenever we started working at the opening and we realized that it was more satisfying for the audience to not get all the information up front, but to slowly learn throughout the course of the movie, uh, that's whenever we started playing with the flashbacks and how and where and what we wanted to see during those. So that was very much uh, an experiment. I think Tyler and I did what we called maximum flashback version where we think we're like, where could they ever go? And there was like, a, and that was like, well, this is way too many flashbacks, but it was really useful. Cause then we were able to be like, okay, the ones that feel right are in this spot and this spot and this spot. And then out of those, this is the bits that I really want to see. This is the thing that makes me feel emotionally connected. This is the thing that makes me intrigued. So we were able to then seed those in a way that we felt like would make the audience most involved in this journey with Adonis so that then when we get to the end and he has the conversation with his wife Bianca about this is what has happened and this is where it how it makes me see myself as a person in this world uh, that it has the most emotional impact we can for the character and then as a result of that for the audience. Yeah, it's just it's great. It's great work. It's a great film. I, I really love talking to both of you about this. Uh, Tyler Nelson and Jessica Backley, the editors of Michael B. Jordan's Creed Three. You can watch it now on a- Amazon uh, if you haven't already. It's a great film. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Oh, thank, thank you. So much, 